Hi guys, this is uh, Andy uh, back here with another video. This is a video about um, Retroleap and actually getting um, Retroleap for the Leapster GS and also the Leapster Explorer. And this is about getting ROMs onto the device. This is um, using WinSCP. Uh, this is a video that's um, been requested quite a lot. I've just not had the time to do it, so I finally got a bit of time now. So I thought I'd try and just put something together uh, to help people who are trying to get this done. Um, so I'm going to assume that you've already got your device set up. I'm going to assume that you've already um, watched my videos about um, installing the data logic driver. Um, and um, and so that the uh, the cable you've got between PC or laptop in my case and um, uh, the Leapster uh, will be creating a network connection through that lead. I think the one thing just to uh, to say here is I think from memory the IP address that you have to use when you're flashing is one six nine two five four. Dot eight. I think it's on the dot eight range. Um, I could be wrong. Um, I'm just going from memory. But the what we need in order to once RetroLeap is actually on the device, um, the device IP that gets uh, assigned that gets assigned to the Leapster is one six nine two five four dot six dot one. So we have to make sure that um, the device our, uh, or rather the PC network device, the data logic driver, um, is set up on the same IP range, um, which I've already done here, but I'll just go in to show you. So if I go into properties, so that's my data logic um, uh, USB LAN adapter. If I go into the properties for IPv4, and you can see that I've already changed to a static IP using 169254.6.10. So it's on the same range, so that should be fine to allow us to access our Leaps, Leapster device or Leapfrog device now that it's plugged in. Okay, so, um, so now that we've done that, we're now into what I'm going to be... Oh, and before we go any further, let's just make sure that we can, in fact ping the Leapster device from the computer and we get replies. Yeah, there we go. So we can see that we're getting some nice replies back. That means we've got a nice established connection. So this is WinSCP. This is what we're going to use. This is a um, WinSCP is a, 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 um, a file manager um, or FTP and SCP client um software the protocol we're going to be using or that we need to use is scp um so uh, when you open up win scp you should actually get this um this dialog box come up um if you don't and it just comes up like this then you want to oh. yeah if you click on new session you get this window come up and we're going to go ahead and even though I think I've already got this set up in here, I'm going to create a new site here so to, I can show you how to get this set up. So the file protocol we want is going to be SCP. The host name that we want is going to be 169254.6.1, which is our leapfrog device. Um, we're going to want to specify Username as root, nothing in the password, and you'll see why in a minute, because we're going to go ahead and go in advanced, and that brings up um, yeah, advanced uh, settings. What we're going to do is we're going to use the certificate file that's within um, SSH flash and SSH flash win. So if you look on the GitHub repository, you'll see that um, in the... Um, in the keys subfolder, we've got two ID RSA files. Now, actually, these are available on SSH Flash as well, like the non-win version. 
um, uh, so that's the original version and actually when you download a release of either of those bits of software you'll see that within um, the, fold, the zip file that you've downloaded you've actually got a folder called keys and in there we've got idrsa and idrsa.pub it's the idrsa which is the private key that's going to be the one that we want to use so if we once we so you'll need to extract that I've, I've already extracted that i've put that in my downloads folder so now i'm going to go down to authentication on the left hand side under ssh and it's asking for a private key file so we're going to go ahead and have a look for our um, private key file just once okay there we go i'm just just got myself into the right folder there so there's our two files you just have to change change it to all files here so that you can see uh, the key that we want because it doesn't have a file extension so we'll go id rsa that's the one that we want and we're going to go ahead and open it now it's going to ask you because i think it uses putty to facilitate this uh, connection it's going to say do you want to convert this open ssh private key to putty format and we're going to go ahead and say yes to that we'll say okay uh, it's going to ask us now where we want to put that we'll put that you see it's converted it to ppk so that's fine so we'll put it in the same location it tells us yep it's gone ahead and saved it and now that's the private key it's going to use to establish our connection so everything's now done there we can say okay and i'm hopeful now if we hit log on we should be able to get in hooray there we go so on the left hand side of the pane is my computer so if i go up a bit here uh, let's see is it going to allow me to do that right just bear with me a second okay right it's connected but it's not letting me change folders so let me just try and find out what the issue is okay sorry something really weird happened there uh, i've just had to sort of reset everything up again because uh, it wouldn't allow me to change folders but um, this time instead of just going ahead and logging in straight away i'm going to save so if i just take it back there so if we're at this point instead of going ahead and, and logging straight in I'm going to save our new connection first and I'm going to say um, let's just call it something like test retro leap um, okay and we'll hit okay on that and now we can see on the left pane I've got test retro leap there which is good so I should now just be able to hit log in you get a nice connecting to host like we did before and now i can actually change directories and go into different things i don't know why it wasn't okay so if we want to get a, a rom transferred across now it is now a simple case so i've got advanced walls there for the game boy advanced i've arranged um my roms folder you can see the path that we're looking at there roms straight roms that's on the device so that's straight off the file system that we've got um, the root folder ROMs and then ROMs again and I've put all of you know the ROMs that I've got into into these folders depending on um, which device we're looking at so it really is I mean I've already got advanced walls in there so let's just to show you it really is just a case of clicking and dragging from one side over to the other and away it goes transfers the file and we can see now we've got advanced walls on the leap page now hopefully uh, the leap start rather and hopefully what i can demonstrate is if i come up again now um, if i want to load a core so that was a game boy advanced game i put on there so gpsp now if we load content go to my start directory which i've configured to be 
ROMs directory and go in here and there we go there's the, the file that I've just copied over and hopefully if I go ahead and run that there we go I've got my advanced wars starting to be played on here There we go, working pretty well. Okay, hopefully that gives you guys what you need to get ROMs on your Leaps to GS or LeapPad Explorer. Okay, and that's the end of this video. And um, yeah, stay tuned for more videos um, in the coming days and weeks.